dramatically increase functional fidelity by adding data filtering logic to your simulations. In this video, we'll demonstrate the use of where conditions to filter the records flowing into a tile list based on user input. Let's start out by creating the tile list that we'll use to display the data records. We'll call it phone search tile list and leave the other attributes unchanged. We'll add five text widgets to the tile as placeholders for our data. To populate the tile list, let's create a datasheet by importing one of the sample datasheets that ship with iRise. As you can see, we've imported product information for an inventory of mobile phones. Back on the product list page, we'll start out by adding all of the records from the product's datasheet to the tile list and mapping the fields accordingly. Let's test the page to make sure the data is flowing into and populating the tile list. Now I need to add the interface that will allow our reviewer to filter the records flowing into the tile list. We'll use three select widgets for this, arranged in a row above the tile list. We'll need some labels for the user inputs. For the price and weight filters, we'll use standard select widgets with hard-coded selection items. For the type filter, we'll configure a dynamic select widget. So we don't end up with duplicate items, we'll select display unique items only. We'll also add select one as a directive. Finally, we'll add a Get Products widget to the canvas and link the category field and the datasheet to the select widget. To use these select widgets to filter the data flow, we'll need to capture the user input. To do this, we'll need to contain them in a form. Wrap in form. Then we'll need to create data flow to the clipboard, making sure the field labels match those on the datasheet. Finally, we'll trigger a submit form action each time the reviewer makes a selection in one of the filters. We'll need to use the on change trigger for this. To make sure the select widgets retain their new values after a page refresh, we'll add a second clipboard widget and send the same fields to the respective user inputs. Now we're ready to add the where conditions that will filter the records flowing into the tile list. First, we'll filter on the category field. To do this, all we need to do is drag the category field label and release it on the Get Products widget. Two things happen. A data flow line labeled with a C is created, and in the Record Widgets Properties panel, we can see the where condition we just created. We'll repeat this for both of the other two fields. Now we have three where conditions. However, for price and weight, we have a problem. If we require that the product parameters match our selections exactly, we aren't likely to get any results. Let's fix this by going into the WHERE dialog. For the rules associated with the price and weight fields, let's change the operator to IS AT MOST. Now the filter should work as expected. Let's test the page to make sure. At first, we don't get any results at all. When we make a selection from the type field, now we see some results. The other two filters enable us to narrow them down. Not every simulation calls for this level of functional fidelity. But in those situations where it provides a clear benefit, we hope we've shown you that setting up data filters in iRise is not as difficult as you might think. Thanks for watching.